If you got one, go and pull it out. Your boy got the glass right there. Y'all hear the ASMR? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You might see, if you can watch the actual podcast, you see I had a couple sips up in there, but we're going to do it together like we never even saw it, all right? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Before we, you know what I mean? Get a little sip. Before we get the sip, I pull that in there. I told y'all I had a couple sips, so I'm out of order right now. All right. If you got one, let's go together. Pin your finger up. Yeah, pin your finger up. All right now. All right now. Sip it a dip it. Let's get it. Mm-mm. You got to splash with that one. Because <laughs> sometimes the drink hits right. And on this occasion, it hits right every time. Every goddamn time. Now that we got that out of the way, I am Creative Vinci. This is Vinci Talks, and on today's Vinci Talks, we just got something, or we're going to cover a saying that a lot of the millenniums, or a lot of the millennials, uh, like to say, which is, uh, match my energy. When it, comes to, when it comes to people that they see or they know, they say, your, min- your energy, <laughs> your energy, your energy has to match my energy, but are you really living that lifestyle? The people you're surrounding yourself with, are they living that lifestyle? So... Without further ado, once again, I am Creative Vinci. This is Vinci Talks. Let's get to work. All right, jumping right into it. This is Friday, feels good. I had a little, you know what I mean, workout in, so my body's feeling good, the pecs moving. See, this is where you need the visuals, so if you're not subscribed on YouTube, this is where you get to see the visuals. Watch watch what the pecs do. I ain't even gonna look at it, watch this. Y'all see, yo, you see that moving? Oh, you can't get that ASMR. Can you get ASMR with the chest? Hold on, let's see. Nah, you ain't gonna hear that. So hey, make sure you following me. You can you can you can get a good look. Get a good little tittle biddle. <laughs> but look, one thing I hear about in just all walks of life with my peers, with pretty much millennials or younger generations is, oh, your energy better match my energy. Your moves better match my moves. But are we really living that lifestyle? I think it's a it's a great conversation to have, and I think we all need to be honest with ourselves. Because I think a lot of times we're not. We might talk a good game. We might try to make it seem like everybody who's riding with us is riding with us or riding for us. And the reality, um, I think that's a small percentage of people who are actually living that life. And I think in order to be successful, you have to adjust fire. You got to change the way you're walking. You got to change the people you're surrounding yourself with in order to reach that next level of where you want to go. Now, I know personal development is definitely a tricky subject because everybody has their own definition of success. But let's let's put success out of the way. How about just happiness? Let me ask just that one question. Take a minute to think about it. Don't be quick to jump the gun. Are you happy right now in your day and age in your life? Are you truly happy? Are you content? Everything that you have right now is it everything you've ever wanted? And do you still have the drive to get more? I think those are legitimate questions that a lot of people are unwilling to ask themselves and give themselves an honest answer. Me personally, I know I can always, there's always another gear, but where I am right now, I can honestly say I'm happy and it has nothing to do with uh, prize possessions, uh, the money in the bank account. Honestly, it's because I'm understanding life a lot more than I did in my 20s. I'm starting to see that the superficial stuff falls at the wayside. And once you get that out of the way, you start to realize what's really important in life. A lot of people out here really in the circles or in the company of people they know they shouldn't be in the company of. <clears throat> One moment. <clears throat> and that's the sad truth. They are they are well aware that the people that they are around right now, they got no business having in their company because they know these people are only with them for probably the potential that they have, what they can get out of you, and what they can get out of you without giving you anything in return. So why does why do most of us put up with that? I honestly think the human nature, it's the human condition that we gotta be, we, we gotta be a part of something, even if what we're a part of is not in our best interest. I'm gonna say that one more time. I think for the most part, the human condition we gotta be a part of something even if being a part of that something is not in our best interest why do we put up with it honestly i i I know i've witnessed it i've experienced it 
we don't want to miss out on something for some reason. We feel as though being a part of something is more important than missing out altogether. Even though whatever you're waiting for to happen in that group of people who are going nowhere, it may never come, but you are still going to wait. Take for instance, or take for example, you've ever watched like me and my wife and my kids, we, we like, uh, we don't watch a lot of TV, but we do watch uh, SVU. Uh, what's it called? SVU, SVU. I forget the main name of it, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Special Victims Unit, um, that TV show. But we watch that. And have you ever watched something, any show on TV, you know how it's going to end because you already saw it. You already saw the show. You know how it starts. You know the middle. You know the climax. And you know how it ends. But you don't want to miss any of it. You got other important stuff to do. Some You got to go downstairs and do something. But no, you're going to wait until commercial break. Even though you saw this already, that's the, that's the way I look at being friends or being in certain cliques or circles that you know is going nowhere you know how it's going to end you know either you're going to be doing most of the legwork you know that the people around you are only waiting for you to make that right move to be successful so they can say that they were with you the whole time but you're going to put up with it anyway so how do you adjust fire how do you figure out how to move without ruffling any feathers i guess and to be honest with you I guess maybe because I'm in my 30s now, but I think I've always been this way, but I'm more confident in knowing myself to understand that I'm not afraid to lose people. I'm not afraid to lose company because you have to realize or you have to understand if you are capable of surviving on your own. How independent are you? Take for example, and it's going to be funny, but y'all going to call me a clown, but I used to, I don't know why I used to do this. (laughs) <laughs> when I was younger, I would go to the, just because I was bored. I just, I wanted to do something plays into not want to miss out on what's going on in the world or on the scene, but I don't really rock with people like that. So like, I don't have a huge following. I don't got a lot of people in my circle. Honestly, most of my circle is comprised of my family, my immediate family. So I used to go to like the club and go by myself and you can sit here, clown me, but don't act like. Don't act like I'm the only one who's ever done this. It's weird as hell, but it's not weird until a certain part happens. So I've gone to the club by myself before. I've gone, uh, I've never gone to the movies by myself, but I think that going to the club is worse because it's literally meant to be on a scene with a group of people to match your vibes. But for me, I was just matching my own vibes. And you ever gone to the club, you don't know nobody there. What's the first thing everybody doing? What's the first thing you're doing? For me, I'm on my phone like this, acting like somebody hit me up. Ain't nobody hitting you up. And then you really think in your head that it's working when in reality, it only takes that like that one person that just be like looking like, yo, my man here by himself. And then it turned from like you just trying to be independent, enjoy your vibe, have a drink to like you just a creep at the club drinking and then look at the rail. And that's that, it's weird. But I think put yourself in those type of situations, because once you cross that threshold, anything else where you're just by yourself doesn't seem too bad understanding that you can be on your own in certain situations where the society norms is that you should be in a group once you get over that hump i'm telling you that's where the confidence comes so it's okay to be in a group of people uh and have a requirement to match that energy or they have to match your energy but what happens when you you you're on that next level in life and you want to you want to own a fortune 500 company you want to start investing you want to own real estate you want to go on these trips and i know somewhere some part of your life you've you've gathered together and try to plan a trip and it just don't it just falls short why because most of those people in your circle either bail out the last minute always got an excuse start backing out once you start mentioning money and honestly that's a prime example where you might want to start reevaluating who you're around because y'all on different levels and what you willing to do you willing to come back down the ladder to make them happy or are you willing to keep advancing and if they whenever it's their time they'll get there or maybe they don't that's life and y'all got to understand that stop playing yourself with this loyalty is fake there's this matching my energy and all this it's fake stop going by these memes and what you see on your timeline trying to determine which what friendship is or what loyalty is when in reality you know what it is it's a feeling, it's a gut feeling when you know somebody really not for you. And when you understand that, you gotta move accordingly. 
But if you choose to stay within that company and deal with that stuff over and over again, you got nobody to blame but yourself. But one thing you cannot blame is rocking a Kenham Collective T. Like this one, for instance, for those who cannot see it, it says elevate the crown. That is the mantra of Kidum Collective. Kidum Collective stands for King and a Making Collective. It's for the culture, always pushing the culture forward. And it's a brand that was pretty much derived or came from uh, the passing of my late brother, Marcus Allen, AKA Queasy. And um, I feel as though what's the point of doing RIPTs when you can actually put a message out there that pretty much exemplifies who he is and personifies who he is so that's what King in the Making Collective is so if you haven't purchased anything from Kidum Collective head on over to KidumCollective.com get yourself something nice buy two or three and when you step out on the scene make sure everybody else around you knows that you and only you elevate the crown bam I'm getting better at them transitions. Y'all saw that. Y'all saw that transition. That boy was swiggle diggle with it. <laughs> that boy killing it. But I digress. Look, like I said, I'm trying to get better with the timing. I'm not editing. This. I'm not going to edit this stuff. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be raw. I'm going to be authentic. And hopefully the people who need to hear this and can digest this will be motivated to do the same and stop hiding behind social media norms where everything has to be perfect. So, along with not trying to be perfect, stop trying to be perfect in these circles that you know you got no business being in. Sometimes staying down don't mean you have to stay down with a company or stay down in the company of others. Sometimes the best feeling is staying down with yourself. Identify who you really are because once you, you got to tab into that. And that's a hard thing to tab into when you're around other people because you tend, you tend to t take on uh, attributes of people around you. So for the most part, one thing I've learned from being in the army for, geez, uh, 17 years now is that, um, yes, it's great to be with a team, but in order to figure out who you are, those deployments to Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, any other country, those are key because now you're away from uh, the family, you know, down the street, your hometown friends across the street, y'all go to the club and stuff. Now, nah, now you in the environment of people who one, they don't know you two. Now you got to know who you are in order to navigate through this new environment. And when you come back out of there, you come back out of there better than when you went in. And you start looking at the people in your old neighborhoods and your old environment and start saying, I love you. I still see you as a king or a queen, but the kingdom, I, the kingdom that I'm trying to build requires most of the work for me. And if you want to come along for the ride, you got to establish something on your own first. It's not wrong to have requirements to have people in your circle because once you do that that's when you start to realize that the energy do be matching because people really want to validate themselves and be in the company to be greater than where they are now take for instance like elon musk you know friends with like and i don't know if he's exactly friends with these people but think about the circle that billionaires are in they're in the company of other billionaires millionaires are in the company of other millionaires uh people who are in uh the industry of uh, uh medicine or whatever the industry is they're usually in the company of those people who are like-minded because it pushes them you ever heard the saying iron iron sharpens iron it's quite true now, if you out here trying to you out here trying to sharpen iron with a butter knife because you got a whole group of people who just got that butter knife potential, then that's your fault. All right. So figure out exactly what you want to do. Figure out exactly what it's going to take to get there. And don't be afraid to drop people at the wayside, because I promise you it'll either give them a salty taste and they'll burn their bridge with you. Oh, well, you'll meet better friends. You'll meet better people who are going to lift you and you're going to lift them or it's going to be an eye opener for them. How much do they really value you? How much of their energy do they want to upgrade to match your energy or surpass your energy? And those are the ones who are lifelong friends. Those are people who are lifelong family. Those are people who are lifelong assets in your life. But you got to be willing to put down those standards. Don't nobody know your standards until you are vocal about it. Sometimes they might call you a prick, an asshole, stuck up. Oh, well, live with them names because you know what? All I hear is I got standards. All I hear is I'm going to go places. I'm going places in life. All I hear is that I know what it takes to get to where I want to go. So 
I don't know how much time I gave y'all, but I think we coming towards the end of this Vinci Talks too. Hopefully this motivates you. Hopefully this makes you look in the mirror and say, you know what? Such and such ain't really, ain't really tailored to where I'm trying to get to. Such and such really is, you know, bringing me down. It's okay to identify that because you only get one life. You know what I'm saying? I, don't, I ain't never seen a do-over. I ain't never seen nobody say you get four or five extra lives. This ain't Zelda. This ain't Mario. So hold yourself to a higher standard. And once you do, that's when you truly start winning. So that's all I got for you. Hopefully you got something great out of this. I told you I'm on my grizzly when it comes to these podcasts, these Venti Talks podcasts. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm unloading a goddamn on barrel. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow your boy on social media. If you're not following me on social media, I don't know what to tell you because you're missing out on some great stuff. I'm active in these social media streets and it ain't for clout either. It's for you to learn something and become better than you were before you started spot following me. As for the podcast, you know where I'm at. I'm on Apple. I'm on Spotify. I'm on Google. And most recently, I'm on iHeartRadio. So I'm active in these podcast streets. If you want to find me, you'll be able to find me. If you don't, oh well. Just do me a courtesy and pass it on to the next man or woman who wants to get to work. That's all I got for you. This has been Creative Vinci. This has been Vinci Talks. Get to work.